guard them. They put their hands on them. I thought I thought he did a good job getting to the free throw line eight times in the, the second, I mean, the first half. Did the same thing in the second half and he didn't get any calls. Uh, but they put it, they're, they're physical with them. They put a lot of bodies. Uh, they dare us to make shots. And, you know, until we start making shots consistently from three, um, they're going to they're gonna put a lot of bodies around him. He's a good player. He's one of the best players in the league. And, uh, but he, he did, he missed some shots that he normally would make. Um, but I think a couple of things have to happen. We got to do a better job of screening. And then we're, we're going to have to do a better job of making some shots, kind of loosen up the defense because they're putting a lot, of, a lot of eyeballs on them. Chase. And you oh. guys. Oh. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Ava. You're good. Sorry, thanks. Um, you guys have had a couple successful games where you've been able to come out strong at the beginning. What do you feel like you can take from those games that you need to replicate or, or need to kind of drill down a little bit um, to avoid the, the flow first starts? Yeah, we got we got to get back in transition. I mean, this team this team was scoring in the paint just about every time in that first quarter. I don't even know how many paint points they had at halftime. Probably about in thirty eight or forty, um, I can remember correct. But we have to we have to be able to get back in transition. This is a it's a problem. You know, when we have a bad slow start, um, we're 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 either, we're either two things happen. We're either turning the ball over or we're not making shots and getting back in defense and putting our heads down when our shot doesn't go in. And tonight, uh, they, they, were, they were getting rebounds and just running. We, were, we didn't make any shots early on. I thought we made some at the very end, it made it somewhat respectable, a nine point uh, deficit after that, after that first quarter. But we changed. I thought Troy gave us great minutes in that second quarter. He changed the game. Those three or four minutes, I thought we were, we were being more physical. They weren't getting all the pain touches. And then we were getting uh, opportunities to score off of their off of their missed shots. And then third quarter we did the same. And then we took some bad shots when we I think we went up two. And then we took some bad shots and we gave them leak out. They had they must have had seven or eight layups in transition. It's just that's it's hard to overcome on the road at home. Doesn't matter where you are in the park. And in summer league, if you're not back in transition, you're giving up layups and three guys are attacking one and two guys. You're not going to have success. Chase. Scott, you guys have made strides uh, with rebounding this year, and, and you've been pretty good overall at um, preventing points in the paint. Why was tonight so different in, in both areas? Well, Valanciunas is a handful. He's, he's a good player. I've said it before the game. I told our team he's, he's an underrated player. He's really good, and he, he does so many good things for them. Not only does he does 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 he do the obvious things, the subtle things that he does, the, the timing of the screens, uh, his weak side help, knowing that when you can be in the lane, you know, three or four seconds, the referees aren't going to call those. They can't call those, and he understands that as well as anybody. And then he was physical. He, he was he was getting anything he wanted. And we gotta if you're if he's bigger like Mo, if he's bigger than Mo, Mo was letting them hit him first and putting them underneath the basket. You got to use, he has to use his quickness. He didn't do a good job throughout the game tonight. And you mentioned Troy uh, had some good minutes for you. What'd you think about his um, secondary playmaking? You know, we've talked about his passing when he's a point guard and, and trying to apply that when he's not the point guard. Yeah, he just has to keep working on his game. He's 21 years old. He's not getting, he hasn't gotten a lot of looks. Uh, in the last month or and a half or so, since he, since after the health and protocol, but but he's he's a, he's going to keep working. He's a, he's a great kid that works hard. Um, I'm glad he came in and played well. I wish he would have hit a, a couple of those threes, but he was active. He is, he, and you know I've told him, and our coaches have told him, you know, always you know, be ready, don't get ready. And I thought he gave us good minutes. If, we would have won this game. Those five, four minutes in the first half would have been a big part of the re big reason why. He has to be ready. I don't know if the minutes are going to come, but we got to get other guys to, to lock in. We need everybody. We need everybody. It's in a we got a tough stretch of games here. We we can't win with one or two guys, three guys. We need all fifteen guys mentally, physically, emotionally. We got to control our emotions. We can't keep getting these technical fouls. 
Yeah, but we got we got to play much better than we did tonight. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, I know it's obviously nitpicky with the way that he scored this year, but the, the one thing that Brad hasn't been super efficient at this year is is threes. Is there anything specific you see with his his three point shooting that's bogged down kind of unconventionally by his standards? No, I mean, I, I think it's I'm hoping that it all just kind of levels out. Uh, I believe in Brad's work. I've seen it now for five years. He's uh, Groundhog Day. He just comes in and does his job, does his does his um, uh, pre-practice work, post-practice, uh, pre-game work. He's very consistent. He's not going to change that, and he shouldn't. He's going to. He's had success. I believe in his work, and I I I can't wait to see it. You know, take shape. He's going to have a month where he's shooting sixty-five percent from three, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing that. And we're going to have to have a couple of guys shoot the ball better as well. But Brad does so many great things. If, if he ends up shooting, you know, 35% from three, that's nothing to, it's nothing. I mean, that is, you know, splitting hairs there. But I think, I think, I still, still feel that he's going to get hot and he's going to have a month that he hasn't missed anything. All right, we'll finish up with Neil. Hey, Scott, you alluded to it already with the 27 fast break points that Memphis had. You guys have talked previously already about, you know, not letting your head down when you guys are missing shots, things like that, and it's seemingly not being executed. Do you think it's an effort issue on transition defense? No, it's putting our head down. I mean, we miss a shot. It's like the end of the world for some of our guys. And our transition, our, our balance wasn't good tonight. We know we have a couple of guys. Russell is one of the big time drivers in the league. When he's driving to the league, I mean, to the rim, uh, he's one of the best at doing that. And his momentum, whether he makes it or misses it, is going to go towards the baseline. And we talked about that. We got to get guys sprinting back. Those first three steps are sprints. And I thought we were waiting too long to see if it's a made or a miss. If he's not passing, you got to space out. If he's not passing, you got to get back. And we didn't do that. We did not do that. They were, it was a dunk fest there for a second. Uh, we're going to get better soon. We've got a tough stretch of games coming up and we got to be able to be able to do a better job of, you know, we took care of the basketball last game we played and we didn't take care of the basketball. We didn't shoot the ball well, but we didn't get back in transition as well. I thought, I thought they had more than 26. I think you said that it was more like 40 and the way sometimes the way we, um, measure it. Troy, I got to start with a non-basketball question and just ask how Dex is doing. <laughs> no, nah, he's all right. He came home, so he's safe and uh, happy with the fam again. So we're we're all good. Can you? I appreciate you checking on him. Can you? Uh, can you tell us what that that entire experience was like for you and getting him back and and just what those emotions were like? Um, I think it's very like nerve wracking. I don't think a lot of people put uh, like emphasis on like how much people value like their pets and stuff like that. And like, you know, like I have Dex registered as like an emotional support dog. So, you know, it was a very big deal for me. Like I definitely was like, hold everything. Like I gotta go find my dog, so. Chase. Boy, uh, another question on that. How, how did he, you get reunited with him? He just decided he wanted to come back. That was really it. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, he really was just like, all right, like, I'm sick of, like, roaming around, this, that, and the third. Like, I'm about to go back home. So that was really it. Uh, we ended up finding him in the neighborhood that he was lost in. And then, uh, yeah, he literally just came back, and that was that. And we were just so happy to have him back. So, but yeah, definitely a blessing. Wow. It's good to hear. Um as far as tonight, um, you know, the opportunity you got, how did you feel like you played? Because um, Scott Brooks said that you were one of the reasons for the turnaround there in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the same thing I've been saying all season, uh, it's more so just me being a professional and being locked in, regardless of my minutes. That's something that I definitely want to be known and something that I take a lot of pride in, just coming in every day and just trying to get better. Uh, we get paid to do a job and to show up, and regardless of, 
how many minutes you get when the coach calls your number, like that you need to be ready. So I really tried to just take pride in that this year and just be ready when my opportunity is called. And like, even if I'm not playing, just focus on, keep on trying to get better. Um, I mean, I believe in myself a lot and I feel like that I, as long as I keep on getting better and I keep the right mindset and I keep working hard that I, the sky is the limit. So I just try to keep my head down, keep on working. And when coach Brooks calls my name, I just try to be a professional and go out there and do what the team needs, especially because sitting on the bench, you get to see like kind of like what we're missing a little bit. So I just tried to be that spark today. Kellen. Hey, Troy. Um, maybe this is has an obvious answer, but I guess, and obviously I, the game dictates how many minutes uh, you get, but do you know before, like how, how soon before a game do you know, like you're going to be, you're going to be playing, you know, a little bit or, or, a good chunk of the game. Do you know that going into the game? No, not at all. It's more so of just being ready when your name is called, you know, and that's the side of being a professional. You know, you get paid to come in and do your job and to try to, you know, help the team. And that's your role. Like coach said after the game today, he was like, we need all 15 guys to be ready. As you know, I guess. So I just try to take pride in that. And I think you had like 13 minutes or so today. How did you feel like you made the most of those, those minutes today? Uh, for me personally, I was just locked in on defense. I was just locked in on trying to do little things. Uh, that's the biggest thing for me at the end of the day. I know Brad and Russ can score the basketball and facilitate and make plays. And that's the biggest thing is like right now, we just need guys to fill their roles and kind of like just do the little things in the court and just like play as hard as they can. You know, at the end of the day, we're a very talented group and I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of great players that are really good and really talented. So it's just more so trying to figure out what we need and then going and executing that as, as hard as I can and just give 110 when I'm out there. Thanks, Troy. Yeah. Ava. Hey, Troy. Um, Scott mentioned to us that uh, in talking about transition defense, something you guys have been discussing is not watching to see if there's a make or the miss, but just kind of starting off on the sprint to get back on defense. Um, what do you feel like happens that makes you get caught up like watching the make or the miss? Is it just something that is in your routine or how do you kind of, I guess, jog yourself out of that? Um, I guess you could just say it depends on the possession, uh, especially like the way everything happens, how the ball flies off the rim. Um, tonight we didn't shoot the ball like super well, you know, at, at the rate that I think we're capable of, but, you know, just more so like, like he says, like at the end of the day, wherever the ball goes, as soon as the shot goes up, we have to get back. And so, you know, tonight we didn't really do a good job of that. And so even like just taking early fouls in the half court, if we have to just stopping them from getting buckets, even if we have like low on the fouls and stuff, we have to do a better job of being aware of that and not letting teams get out because that's how they get their rhythm and like their momentum and they start playing really loose. And um, you talk so much about always staying ready for when your name is called and everything, but in, in this season where there's not a lot of practice time either. So it's not like you can go and show coach Brooks, like, okay, I'm working really hard in practice today. How do you kind of communicate to him that you're taking everything seriously? You're still working hard. Like, how do you show him stuff um, in that way, this weird season? I feel like for me personally, like at the end of the day, it's just one of those things where I show up and I just try to be more about the action than I am about the talking. Uh, that's just me though. Like, that's how I am. I feel like a lot of other guys in the organization kind of know that. Like I just take pride in showing up and being locked in and just, you know, like I said, just trying to make the most of my opportunity. There's only 450 guys in the league, you know, like I'm still blessed to be here and blessed to have the opportunity that I have. So I'm just trying to keep that mentality and just keep on trying to get better every day. So. All right, we got a couple more here, Fred. Troy, you made a couple plays tonight as kind of a secondary creator um yeah. i'm curious how i know you spent so much of your basketball life kind of setting up an offense bringing the ball up that kind of stuff how do you evaluate your skills as kind of a primary set the offense up kind of facilitator versus playing in that secondary facilitating role i feel like i'm capable of that um i felt like this year the first time i got to really show that was like in preseason and like kind of like the second half when we played brooklyn and then I think Miami in Miami, like I played secondary ball handling. So I feel like I'm capable of it. Um, I definitely played ball, primary ball handling last year, like in the bubble. So I feel like I'm capable of it. Like I definitely feel like I have the skills to do that. So. 